Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. This segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. By George, we only have a couple more days here left now. This is it. This is the last day before the major election, and I'm sure all our eyes are pretty well set on the presidential election, but we got many other elections that are around, and especially in the state of Oregon. We got we got local stuff, city of Portland. I mean, it's all over the place. But the fact of the matter is, is that I'll still say, as I said the last time around I was on, I said, this is the Bible, if you will. It comes closest. <laughs> You've been hitting with all kinds of campaign material in the mailbox. I mean, uh, TV, radio, the whole nine yard. But the bottom line is that, uh, uh, you know, this is this is your Bible, if you will. And as you know, you've got your we're, we're vote by mail, by mail state. And I think it's very important that you get involved in the process. As I indicated before, the last time around, pick out the Bible, get your get your voters pamphlet and then you can just go through that and vote accordingly. But I think that's very important. I'll make one indication in regards to the fact about the Bible aspect of it. And that is, is that. Uh, uh, all kinds of things are getting into the mail. You remember that, right? But, you know, you can go down to the to the local media and buy yourself an ad and say anything you want to say about anybody. No one goes to jail. That's right. If they say something wrong or they lie or they cheat or whatever, no one goes to jail. The only thing that, the, the quote, the major newspaper will say to you is that if you've got enough money to write a, come up with an ad, you can say whatever you want to say. That's a very interesting thing. Hopefully we may have a discussion on that at some point in time in the future, whatever. But anyway, long and short of it all is this, this is this is this will be the show that basically kind of give you some ideas of what is being said and talked about on the campaign trail at the, in the last few days or whatever. And so what I'm going to be doing is that I've got three guests and then I'm going to end up to show myself and talk a little bit about some of the things that have happened uh, over the past uh, week or so. But I've got three guests and I think you're going to find them all interesting. I've got I just happen to have the uh, the chair of Multnomah County here in in Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Multnomah County chair of the Republican Party in Jeff Reynolds, who's very, very articulate, been a hard worker, if you will, still trying to get his candidates locally uh, out there, knocking on doors and whatever. I know he's got a, even a bus project. I, the last time I, I had one of his candidates on the show about a couple weeks or so ago nice. and whatever. So the bottom line is that um, Jeff is here with us, and hopefully we'll just kind of, we're just going to give him the floor and give him the opportunity uh, to bring us up to date, uh, whatever he wants to say in regards to the party whether it be from a local standpoint or whether it be from a national standpoint. And like I said, he's re basically representing the Republican Party, and we'd like for him to articulate what he feels. And understand what I'm saying. We're all creatures of our exposure. If I, I could have anybody in that chair, and trust me, you'll be a little bit different than whatever Jeff is. But the fact of the matter is he is chair of uh, uh, Multnomah County Republican Party, and uh, hopefully he's been out there, again, dealing with people day in and day out. Oh my so, goodness, Jeff, yeah. you got the floor. Let's talk about it. What, All right. Well, what? thanks, Bruce. I appreciate you having me hey. on. And um, yeah, man, we've been busy. We've been real busy. It's been crazy. Um, I've never worked so hard in my entire life. Okay. It's an uncompensated position. You know, it's all volunteer stuff. And we've got a, a team of volunteers just, you know, starting off with Multnomah County Republican Party. We are doing better than we ever have before. We have a permanent office out on uh, Northeast Halsey in the Gateway area. We have a, a phone bank set up there. We are doing better than we ever have. We We've got, uh, or at least you know, in 10, 15 years anyway, we have a presence. We have a, a permanent headquarters, and um, we've got a we got a ton of money coming in. We've been selling Romney Ryan signs left and right. Um, I, I, I've heard through the grapevine that the Democrats haven't been doing too well with their Obama signs, and uh, you know, the the, the national came in, campaign came in late to Oregon, and so they got a late start on getting those signs out. Meanwhile. We went out and made our own signs, mm -hmm. and we uh, we sold. We, so far, we've sold over 1,500 Romney Ryan signs mm -hmm. throughout Multnomah County. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got field signs out. We've got a bunch of a bunch of stuff going on. So we've, and that's you know we, that's allowed us to make a little bit of money, um, and uh, you know cover our costs, and then a little bit over. Uh, so we're doing real well there, and we're we're doing so well that we were able to actually do uh, financial support for our candidates, for our local candidates, which we haven't done in, in forever, decades. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was very pleased with those results. We were able to uh, donate $4,000 to our state candidates, our local uh, House District and Senate candidates, um, and it, it was phenomenal. So 
lots of really good things going on. Who are uh, some of the of, people that are running? Some, some of the, the well, we've, we supported the statewide candidates such as Newt Bueller for Secretary of State, uh, Bruce Starr for uh, Bureau of Labor and Industries Commissioner. Uh, let's see who else. Thomas Cox running for uh, Treasurer and uh, uh, James Buchel running for Attorney General. Mm -hmm. And we also got our local candidates like uh, Scott Hansen running for Senate out in Gresham against uh, Lori Montes Anderson. Uh, he's got a real shot to take her uh, spot. And then we've got uh, local candidates like, oh, and uh, I want to mention Gary Coe, too, mm -hmm. running uh, uh, downtown Portland and Washington County uh, Senate against Mark Hass. Mm -hmm. He's got a real shot at taking that seat as well. So those are two uh, seats we're very excited about. Uh, in the House District races, we've got uh, Tim McMenamin running in District 41, uh, running against uh, Carolyn Tomei. So that's that's a uh, uh, he's been running a very solid race there and, and really putting what, the fire what, on her what feet. What district is that? That's 41, uh, uh, Southeast Portland and, and Milwaukee. Okay. So it crosses over into Clackamas County. Yeah. And we've got Maggie Nelson running in House District 47, the old Jefferson Smith seat. She's the one that yeah, was, she was here. on a couple yep. weeks ago. She represented so. herself real well. Right, right. She's she's a great lady. I, I love her to death. It's quite a educational background yes, she retired uh, retired as a teacher yep. if you will and now yep. sits on the, i guess mount hood the community college board right? that's right that's right and she won that she won that seat that she wasn't supposed wow. to win because uh, she has such a big democrat edge in that district but uh, she went out knocked on all the doors worked like mad and you know worked harder than the other guys and won the seat so yeah, she she's hoping to she do the same good, thing she here. did a good job yeah, here, yeah. especially when she brought up the point about the economy right and that uh, natural community college play, are going to be playing a, a major role if you will in mm -hmm. terms of making sure that they educate and train these folks and sure i think about um, i think about the whole issue with uh, what's our electronic folks up there uh, Intel. Oh yeah, uh -huh. Intel. They're, they're yeah. going to be doubling that. Uh, right. They they can't find people in right, Oregon. To, right, right. I mean, they, they, yeah. So. And we talked about that a little bit from the standpoint that they're going to be trying to go on for those jobs. And so you know, mm -hmm. they, anyway, mm -hmm. it was a good deal. She needs a good. Deal. Yeah, she's she's great. She's an awesome candidate. And of course, Matt Wand is running for re-election mm -hmm. uh, next door in House District 49. And we've got a bunch of candidates. We we actually have a chance to pick up a couple of seats in Multnomah County, and we're making more strides and more progress. And overall, this year, 2012 has been interesting because there's a huge uh, enthusiasm edge for the Republicans. You see it with the national campaign with Romney Ryan. You see it with Newt Bueller. You see it with Bruce Starr. Uh, Bueller and Starr are within striking distance. In fact, Starr is leading in a in a recent poll over Brad Avakian. So mm -hmm. that, that would be a huge uh, pickup for us. Uh, so there's a, a a lot of enthusiasm. I, I I'm actually I'm on record now predicting that Romney Ryan is going to win Oregon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I I'm very I'm confident in that, and I'm hopeful that that will also lead to coattails uh, in our down ticket races mm -hmm. with uh, you know again with the the statewide races and our local. How did you think the Oregonian did in regards to endorsement? Uh, well, I I didn't read all of the all of the local endorsements, but yeah, Bueller and he didn't just pick up Oregonian. He picked up. 13 of 15 major newspaper endorsements mm -hmm. around the state, mm -hmm. which was huge because, you know, you've got an incumbent that ha now has a four-year record, and most people that are observing this have found her it's record lacking. Kate Brown, Kate, yeah, Brown, right? Kate Brown, yes. In fact, uh, we created a Twitter hashtag for her, Corrupt Kate, because she, you know, <laughs> with, the, with the moving of the Bureau of Labor Industries race, race from May to November, mm -hmm. uh, it, that, that was the thing that kicked it off, and then we started digging into the record, and there's more, you know, she's not doing the audits she's supposed to be doing. She's not uh, uh, maintaining proper security with elections. We, we've seen all kinds of things that have come up that have been just like, are, are you kidding? This is you're supposed to be the most detail-oriented person in the mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. and yet you know she's got this reputation of being anything but. Mm -hmm. So uh, Newt Bueller's come in and really run a, a great campaign. He's uh, you know it's all positive. It's all you know a strong message of this is what I would like to do to improve the audit division, the elections division, and and make things better for all Oregonians. So, you know, another point I was making, I, and I just shared that thought with you. Uh, there's always been this hidden agenda, and from the standpoint that race was an issue here, mm -hmm. the whole issue of race, and the fact that um, outreach into African Americans, you know, in the Republican Party was something that was kind of like sort of laid back, if yeah, you know, yeah, things yeah. of that nature. And then, and then, as you note, uh, recently, um, uh, uh, General Powell, i.e., Secretary of State Powell, mm -hmm. uh, went on and voted for uh, President Obama. Sure, sure. Get that piece. And then, and well, then let's, we let's be same. honest. Let's most about, what about, what most, most Republicans don't think of Colin Powell as an actual Republican, okay. though. So right. I, we, we didn't really. What about me? 
<laughs> I don't know. Do you? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're you're certainly a solid yeah, Republican. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right, but right, right. Uh, no, I um, I think uh, the Colin Powell thing. The the left wanted more people to react. Oh my gosh, it's it's happening again. But it, it's not. I mean. <laughs> Honestly, there's so much lack of enthusiasm for the Obama campaign, and it, especially in comparison to 2008, that um, you know, you're really seeing uh, the scales fall from people's eyes, and they, they they look at the record and not the potential, and that's that's what's really affecting this race. But as far as race race relations race. in yeah, in the state of Oregon, yeah. you know that, that I I will admit that that's that's something that we haven't focused on. What we've what we've been trying to do, especially as with me as chair, is We've been trying to build the party back up. We've been trying to, you know, because there there wasn't really much there when when I took over, and and um, you know we've we've had some struggles with. Uh, well, positive. that I recognize. Yeah, yes, that's absolutely. why you've been yeah. on the show several times. Sure, this sure. Is where, all due respect, uh, the majority, a number, the a number, uh, quite the majority of state of Oregon mm. happens to be here within this tri county area. Absolutely, no question about it. And if and, and we're never going to win uh, Oregon, well, yeah. you know, but uh, or we're never going to well, win Multnomah yeah, County. Yeah, right. But if we if if we shift it to the right, right. a few points, then right. we can have major consequences over the entire that. state. Yeah, we've been, you've been trying. You know, so so as far as race relations, we were just talking a little bit uh, before the show right. started, and for me, it's it's more about I I don't see race. You know, I I don't look at race as as, as an issue, and, and and I understand that that it's if there's injustice, then that absolutely definitely has to be dealt with, but. For me personally, and for most of the conservatives I know, we don't we don't look at somebody uh, based on the color of their skin. It's the content of their character. Mm -hmm. It's the you know we we try to follow Martin Luther King, who was actually a, a registered Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, we we try to follow that that model of hey you know we're all people we're, we all have our our what we can contribute to society and what we can contribute to the party, and that's that's what we try to uh, focus on. Well, you know, as you know, many many African Americans felt that it should have been more pronounced. In, during the election aspect, from a national perspective, uh, if in in 2012 or 2008. 2012. <clears throat> well, you know, um, I think a lot of people are are sort of frustrated with. You know, we we talked about how uh, President Obama in 2008 declared himself before he uh, took over as. He, his presidency would be the first post-racial presidency. Mm -hmm. And from our perspective, all we see is divisiveness and, and, and focusing on race and, and you know, trying to uh, play that, that identity politics mm -hmm. where you, you favor one group for one thing, you favor another group for another thing. Instead of what Republicans want to try to do is to raise the, the tide that lifts all boats. Uh, so we treat everybody exactly the same and, and give them the, the same uh, uh, opportunity to to succeed in the society. And I'm sure you would agree that it's like anything else. Uh, all Republicans uh, are, are, are not, well, some Republicans will be voting for him, just like any other situation. Sure, right? sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And vice versa with Democrats. Yeah, you know but, saying? you know. Some you, Democrats will be voting for, for Romney. Well, I've seen recent polls that show that uh, he's, he's even, uh, Obama is losing his base and that there are, there's a segment of Democrats that are are migrating over to the Republican Party, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, he's in trouble. I, I don't. I, I think. I think it's going to be a pretty comfortable win for for Romney. Um, and like I said, I, I think Romney's going to take Oregon too. Well, let's put it that you have to make that point. That point right? Well, sure, yeah. On both sides. No, both sides out. No, look, I, it, <laughs> both sides out. If I didn't believe it, I, I mean, could say something like, uh, you know, well, despite Romney not being able to take uh, Oregon, he can still raise all her candidates. I, got, I don't. I got that. Bob coming on. I mean, <laughs> no, trust me. I mean, I want you to know a diehard Republican, right? right. Democrat. <laughs> I Jim out a hard nosed Democrat. That's right. I tell you, he'll be on here just like yourself. Yeah. No yeah. problem. You're supposed to fight for your candidate. Right. I mean, that's, right. that's what it's all about. Okay? No, I, I actually do believe it though. I, okay. I I think it's going to be over 300 electoral okay. votes, including okay. the seven electoral votes from Oregon. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty firmly uh, convinced of that. And just a little quick note: What do you think about the whole issue with uh, the, the the Sandy deal, Hurricane? Oh, Sandy. Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Well, and you Christie, know, and Governor Christie from. Well, Governor Christie's actually um, he he's I, I understand where he's coming from with uh, uh, wanting to represent his entire state and and make sure that they coordinate properly with the federal government and all of that stuff for for relief efforts. Um, but uh, you know he's he's uh, there are there's a certain segment of the Republican Party that's that's uh, not satisfied with him because well for other reasons in the past uh, you know he's been a bulldog on public sector unions which well, is great tough, tough guy that's right but you know he's also I mean he's been he a little bit more bipartisan than uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. some some Republicans are. 
so. two days. You think he might be, be getting on the campaign trail? I think that something big is always happening around here. You never know. You think <laughs> maybe. he might be getting back on the trail or something? Uh, maybe. I, I, I think he's pretty busy back in New Jersey, though. I, you know, uh, He was out here in 2010 uh, stumping for Chris Dudley. That was a lot of fun, but okay. uh, he's, he's got his hands full there. And what, about the mayor? what about the mayor from New York, Bloomberg? What do you say about that? Um, well, Mayor Bloomberg, <laughs> Mayor Bloomberg, Refused to allow the the National Guard to come into the city of New York because they carry guns that are loaded mm. So they wouldn't allow relief efforts from the National Guard to come into the city. He's been excoriated and rightly so because uh, it, He's completely ignored Staten Island uh, He is he's uh, where, where there are thousands of people still stranded without you know food shelter uh, the whole thing um, he's he's also been I mean, you know, it took him forever to uh, cancel the New York ma Marathon, where he was fiercely in, in favor of holding it, and then all of a sudden he got this massive public backlash, and it was only ESPN that really changed well, his you mind. Think you think his know? endorsement uh, endorsement of Obama is going to have a, maybe a bump or something? No, I don't think it'll. I mean, you know, that's okay. that that was to be expected. Okay. What about the Sandy deal? What do you think? Do you think there might be something? There, there's a little bit of something there because uh, I've seen polls where uh, he's his uh, President Obama's favorability has increased over the last couple of days in eastern states but if you if you really look at it those are states that he's going to carry anyway new jersey new york connecticut the the states that were really affected by uh by hurricane sandy the, the one wild card here i think is is pennsylvania because the, okay. the the recent polling showed them tied uh in a state in pennsylvania where obama assumed he was going to win mm -hmm. so it was really neck and neck and and sandy might might just be enough to uh, win Pennsylvania for Obama, so that that would be uh, that that'll come down to the wire. So the race is still tight, and that's what's being said. It's, it's very tight, yes. Okay. And and even if even if Romney, as I predict, wins 300, 320, whatever uh, electoral votes, it's still going to be you know 53 to 46 or 52 mm -hmm. to 47 or whatever it is. It's going to be very close because the the popular vote doesn't really vary that much. So what really matters, obviously, is the electoral college. You know, I would like to have seen both candidates, for that matter, running. For, for president to make a statement now early on that whoever wins the other one will shake hand and work with well i would like to see that i i is that fair? Uh, i think that's very fair and i think that um uh who was it oh it was harry reed came out last week and uh -huh. said uh uh if if romney's elected president and i'm still the uh uh leader of the senate i won't work with president romney well, you could say that's politics right now, right? He has to say. I'm what just. Do you think? No, he doesn't have to say that. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. I'll call Harry. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. There board. you go. Yeah. That's fair. So yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I think but I, we need to do something. We we can't we can't go further. We've got we can't be divided. We've got to be together. I agree. I agree. We'll and I think forward. that I think that the campaigns that you're seeing mm -hmm. from Romney and from Obama. Both are, are very stark in, in what they would do. Right. I, I actually believe that Romney's run a very positive campaign, mm -hmm. um, it, talking about the, the economic record and about his vision for bringing everybody together, whereas I believe that uh, uh, Obama still is practicing the politics of division and um, you know uh, uh, identity politics that divides everybody and, and doesn't give us any reason to come together. In fact, it gives us an incentive to be more clannish and, and separate and instead of reaching across the aisle. You know, I'm sort of reminded when I think about Oregon and the bar, and the bar. Uh, oh, yeah. The water meets, where the fresh water meets the salt water. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Gummy. I see a business side on one side mm -hmm. and the social side on the other side. You sure, know what I'm saying? sure. And boom, they're mixing. So, so where do we go from here? You know, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, thing geographically right. across the state of Oregon because right. you've got the valley you've got everywhere right. else, you right. know, and, and uh, right. uh, there's no trust at all between yeah. right. those two exactly. separate sets of exactly. populations. So. And that's why we're doing this, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, so. Jeff has been great. And I'm sure that the viewing artists appreciate the, the IE, the update. Yeah. And, and, and you're suggesting to get, have them go out and get out and vote, right? Absolutely. Please get out Please and vote. That point. Yep. May, get out and vote. Um, if you're a Republican, we could use your help at the call center. Uh, give our uh, a office number? a call at 503-956-0919. And the website is www.multnomagop.org. O-R-G. So uh, check it out. We, we have lots of volunteer opportunities. We've got lots of enthusiasm. Okay. People People coming in and out of the office all the time. It's it's a there's a lot of buzz. Well, good job, Jeff. All, all right. right, I'll probably see you in Tuesday. All right, thanks okay. a lot, Bruce. Yeah, thanks very much. All right. Okay, thanks very much, Jeff. And what we'll do now, we'll just we'll get to get another guest coming on up. Okay, Matt Cummings is going to come on up right now. Come on, Matt. Just come on up. That's okay. Get in there. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Matt. All right.
Well, that was good. That was entertaining. Matt, how you doing? Good. Doing real good. Now, now Matt, here, I want you to know, folks, is, is a world traveler. This guy, he, he, he's, he's the minister that I've, I've talked with. Not too many ministers are, uh, are willing, if you will, to come on uh, Voters Digest for whatever reason, whatever. Uh, and the bottom line is that um, Matt, Matt goes out and he's... Um, He's, I, 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 I even identify him sort of as an evangelist of some sort. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's actually pe preaching the word. He's, yeah. he's making a point about, the, uh, about, uh, about God and uh, along those lines and disciples and what. He's, a, he's the disciple, if you will. Sure. Sure. He's, a, he's a man of God. But the bottom line is that uh -huh. I, I, thought, I thought it would be a, of interest to have Matt on uh, to talk, if you will, about um, uh, the ministry in, in regards to uh, more specifically. I know he's, 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 a, he's a very diverse kind of a ministry as far as his word is concerned, but I'm asking him to speak specifically about um, the African-American ministry uh, here sure. in, in this country, uh, black ministry sure. in this country, sure. uh, about, the, about the issue of uh, the gay marriage thing. And yeah. I've asked him specifically to spend some time sure. on that piece. He can, he can spend some other time on anything else he wants to do. Sure. But that was a very interesting point there, and I, I want Matt to just share that with As you know, there was sort of a, a divide. And would you mind explaining to him, Shannon, how we got into that piece? Sure. You well, to? you know, uh, in general, uh, one of the the... Um, main issues in regard to this election itself has been, uh, or, or actually I'll say it different, the disregard of the social issues okay. has been a major problem in this election itself. Expand on that a little bit, would you mind? Uh, well, this the when people are, are focusing on the economy, uh, which is understandable, and not paying attention to the moral fiber of the country itself, mm -hmm. meaning uh, faith, meaning religion, uh, things of that nature. Um, uh, and politicians on, on all sides are, are basically, for the most part, leaving the very fibers that helped this country be tied and brought together mm -hmm. itself. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of black ministers, and I deal with black ministers in, in Chicago, Mm -hmm. I do have black ministers in Texas. Mm -hmm. I do have black ministers actually uh, in California. Um, not a lot here, up in Seattle area as well. And uh, uh, a lot of ministers, whether they're Democrat or Republican, have been very disappointed in regard to uh, uh, the lack of moral integrity in this election mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is in regard to uh, uh, the same-sex marriage mm -hmm. issue and why politicians have not taken a much more firm, conservative stand in that arena itself. So what was the position about the Holy Spirit same-sex marriage? <clears throat> well, uh, there two sides there, right? Uh, yeah, there's two sides to it. One being that, um, that uh, and you know what, I'm going to, for this case, mm -hmm. I'm going to try not to do Democrat and Republican. Okay. I'm going to let them fight that out. Okay. But I'm going to talk just in regard to um, uh, the issue itself. Uh, people believing uh, basically that uh, uh, that um, same-sex marriage is a civil right. Mm -hmm. Okay, believing that 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 in regard to um, to uh, its its uh, its premise that that each and every person uh, has a right to marry who they can. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, I'll leave it there for that. Okay. On, on the other end, people believing that the Bible, being the authentic Word of God, mm -hmm. basically states that certain lifestyles are contrary, and we should not promote such lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Yes, a person can live as they want to, but we should not uh, publicly uh, uh, encourage that, that type of lifestyle in the public life itself of our country. And so both of these two different types of ways of thinking clashed and within the black community itself, black ministers, when they finally heard uh, our, our president basically say that he supported same-sex marriage, mm -hmm. uh, it literally brought a divide within the black community all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, ministers that, uh, that, that had been in minister associations for years, Saleh of Noor, were in a real uh, tussle in regard to, uh, uh, you know, which do you believe? Do you believe that it, that, that it really is a civil right? Or do you believe what the Bible really says about it, that the lifestyle itself is contrary to the word of, uh, of the Lord? And then, 
as a minister, how do you uh, translate that into this election and, and how to best uh, uh, serve your congregations mm -hmm. in encouraging them how to vote or how not to vote mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the fact remains that uh, even in the Chicago area, Barack Obama was known since 1994, mm -hmm. when he first ran for state office up there, that he supported same-sex marriage. This information did not get out in 2008 at all. Mm -hmm. It gets out this year. Mm -hmm. Three and a half years later, okay. And so for most ministers, but even particularly for most black ministers, that knowledge was not common knowledge. But several ministers did, re uh, they, they, they re rejected that, right? They, they, they came out in, sure. in opposition. I think that was on, that was on na national press. Yes, yes, national it finally press. did happen. And actually, um, uh, these shepherds, several of them I know, uh, actually went around the country and gathered uh, over 100,000 signatures for the sanctity of marriage, which is between a man and a woman itself. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it is always a struggle to not want to, um, uh, as I would say, to not want to, um, to be a prejudice against a person because of a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, holding to the truths of the scripture itself. And uh, so, um, you know, that's a struggle right now that's going within the black community and specifically within black pastors all over. Hmm. And so for me, what I found uh, traveling around and ministering in different communities, uh, uh, pastors are uh, uh, either saying, yes, we'll vote for Obama, no, we'll vote for Obama, but even more, a lot of them are saying we won't vote at all. Hmm. And to me, that's a shame as well. Hmm. Because whether, uh, now for me, I'm conservative, right. okay? Right. Uh, a fiscal conservative and also a social conservative. But I believe it is every American's responsibility to exercise their right to vote, whether I agree with them or I do not, mm -hmm. okay? But in regard to the scriptures, I do not believe that anything should be done to delegitimize the scriptures. And so therefore, because of that, I am very much um, uh, encouraging people, and particularly black pastors, to really seek the Lord in regard to this election. In regard to the scripture, in other words, vote righteously. Vote scripture. Don't vote opinion vote scripture and so that's what's been the case and um uh shepherds who had issues with me in regard to my uh political affiliation four years ago doors have opened left right and center mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the revelation that's come out mm -hmm. you know ministers, so, there, so there has been an outreach if oh you will, man to, there's uh, been an outreach on like both sides that, of the room on both democrats sides. or republicans i mean yeah. i don't want to get the politics again but, but there's been a major struggle on what do you do? We supported this president four years ago, mm -hmm. but we supported because not just that he has a wife and kids, but because we believed he was moral. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're seeing that, that his belief is contrary again to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, and so those are the things right now that, that are very evident. So, for both Democrats and Republicans, I'm going to say it like this. There is a major groundswell mm -hmm. that the political establishment has not been paying attention to mm -hmm. within the Christian world right now. Mm -hmm. All over, believers that have not been involved before have been registering mm -hmm. because of this issue right here. Mm -hmm. and, and it will be felt in this election. What about the Romney camp? Did they say anything about that? Actually, issue? see, that's the thing. The Romney camp, being Mormons, they basically believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there was a real encouragement to want to see more said on that. Mm -hmm. But Romney did what he felt he needed to do, which was stick on the economy. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. So. But that um, was a golden opportunity. Though, that was a from, golden opportunity. From a national perspective. From a national, folks, you know, national perspective. TV. I mean, that was, that was pretty tough. That's right. And, and see, people forget three, uh, a week or so before the Democratic convention, black ministers stood up in North Carolina, or I believe it was in Carolina, mm -hmm. and basically said, we're against voting for same-sex marriage. 
you know, basically. So uh, in general, um, there is a real, um, I guess the best way to say this, um, uh, uh, this election is going to be felt in regard to not paying attention to the social issues itself. You know, you bring up a good point because one of the things I'd said on the show, Frank Bob was here, we talked about this issue. I, I had a little concern about uh, the Democratic Convention from the standpoint of uh, uh, of uh, the invocation, you know, uh, possibly g being given by, uh, uh, by by a black minister, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that didn't happen. And the same thing in the uh, on, on the Republican side. Yeah, I took you know some heat for that. I think about Al Sharpton. You know what I mean from the mm -hmm. standpoint of the Democratic side and Jesse Jackson. They were basically sitting out in the audience. Mm -hmm. And then I would have thought that you know maybe the Romney camp could have basically done something the same thing. These, these were ministers, and I mean at, because they had. Because they had said, made their statements, mm -hmm. that was already out there. Sure. And I would have thought that there would have been a, an opportunity, if you will, uh, for both camps. Sure. Put someone out to basically answer it. Or if not that, uh, sit down with them. You know, make, having a formal discussion, if you will, on both sides of the camps, if you will. Mm -hmm. Because that's a very, very important piece. Sure. Because our young people are looking for a way, if you will. Uh, because the bottom line, uh, many ministers are trying to, what can they do to get i.e. get their flocks that's right with, with young folks that's right and on both sides yeah that's right okay. and 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 the struggle that young people have yeah. is that if young people are, are 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 lost they're always looking to their leaders to bring the moral compass up the mm -hmm. standard up that needs to be but if their leaders are not taking the stand that's necessary how can they expect the next generations to do what's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is some, uh, uh, this is just the most interesting time. And um, uh, I, I say this again to uh, all the pundits, political pundits, um, the church is going to be heard on this one. Mm, good. Okay. Any other things that you, you might have heard on the trail that, that comes out, if you will? Well, I'm actually, you know what? Since I may not be on your show again, right quick, let me just say this right well, quick. You're not saying what you want to say. I mean, as I said, I want you to share your. The part. last time that I was here and we were, and, and Bob was here too, and we were discussing about the direction of us as, as black people. Mm -hmm. And if anyone doesn't know, I took some heat for the statements that I made. What is that? Just because. What was the uh, statement? What, what particular one did you mind? Basically, made? that, 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 uh, that um, uh, both. Both Democrat and Republican um, uh, um, conventions did not have black ministers mm -hmm. uh, speaking, and um, but that, we agree with you on that. Yeah, no, we not you all. Yeah. I'm just saying, I took heat outside well, of the outside. Yeah. Any particular people I mean, can I invite them on the show? Mm, just... Well, no, I'll just say it like this. I took some heat really? for for basically speaking and saying that as black people, mm -hmm. we need to reconsider how we've been doing our political politics in the future. Mm -hmm. And I'll stand by that now. We mm -hmm. need to reconsider mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the sake of our neighborhoods and who we are. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure mm -hmm. that in the future, that that uh, as uh, as black people, that we are able to begin the process. Conservatives and those that are not, yeah, on both sides of the aisles, both sides of the oh, aisles, yeah. Oh, yeah. actually sit down and actually discuss our future. Well, you know, uh, you make a good point there because, in fact, Jeff knows that about me. I mean, I. Uh, I'm a, I, I consider myself a Lincoln Republican to get my point across to sure. Jeff, and uh, he knows how I feel about the a recent calendar that was put together by the Bush administration, sure. the Freedom Calendar, and, and how, uh, how detailed it was in regards to black involvement and how, how blacks were Republicans at one point in time, mm -hmm. and the number of, uh, number of blacks who fought in the, for this country, sure. 350,000 strong, if you will, mm -hmm. and the fact that Lincoln was a Republican, and you know, sure. and so Jeff knows about my piece, and he knows I've been, I, I've gone, I've gone to the, uh, uh, to to the, the to meet the committee meetings, Multnomah County, and whatever, and we've talked about this, and I've shared my deal and whatever. So he knows I'm not, I'm not going to link, link with that, and vice versa. So we're sure. we're communicating, and I, I like the point that you're making. So the so the ministers are, there will, there's an agenda. 
Well, of course. And you're going to get back to the folks to get involved. That's the key. Get, That's the involved, get involved. Get involved in the process. Whether you whether whether you're conservative or whether you you, you know, whether you're conservative or liberal or mm -hmm. whatever, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, we got all kinds of parties nowadays. Come but on. get involved. It's very important to get involved. So okay, so that's really good. I appreciate this, and um, and you know, Matt, it's always a pleasure. And you, you, hopefully you will come back on the show as often as we possibly can get there. You, 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 and you won't get any heat today, right? Uh -oh. Hopefully I took some of that heat off. Yeah? Well, well, if I do, that's fine because my ministry is used to controversy. Is that right? Anyway. Sounds good. That's not Matt, new. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank okay, you. Appreciate it. Bob? All right, folks. Well, let's see now. Now, let's see now. We got, we got, we got, uh, we got somebody <laughs> representing the Democratic Party. I'm a, first, I'm going to talk to him about... Um, his representation first, and then we're going to just have our discussion and sort of bring just bring everything in the rear, if you will. Okay, Bob, how you doing? Real good, Bruce. How are you? Good, 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 good. Let's see how many skins did uh, Eugene give you this time. Uh, Eugene, he he only beat me by two strokes uh, Friday, <laughs> I was, but it was muddy out there. I, I got an excuse. I, I, I caught I caught him off guard, folks. Otherwise, he would never admit it. That, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I don't have to give you any stroke. <laughs> then, then there's James Winters, you know, James. He told me that James, by the way, had, had lost and whatever, but then come to find out, I, I talked with James. He said, no, Bruce, I did a job on well, him then, We played again, and he did do oh, a job Oh, that's what you're him. talking yeah, about. Yeah, he, he, okay. he got us back. Okay, well, I get it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I, I wanted to make that point across. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, uh, Bob, you, you know, you've been associated with the Democratic Party for a long time. You yes. know, I know that. And you, you, you're very adamant about uh, your, your posture and your position and your definition of the Democratic Party and why you've been a part of it. I know you've had the ups and the downs, and I, and I know you have, have made major strides and focus on making sure that black folks were involved in, in the Oregon Republican Party. In fact, last week we did this. You basically brought the issue up again with their vice chair, right. uh, you and Loretta if you will. So I know that you've got quite a bit of interest, almost like uh, like Jeff, if you will, on the Republican Party side. And so what I'd like for you to do is sort of give us give the, give the Democratic Party sort of an update and at the same time give Jeff an update in terms of where is the party from a national perspective and from a local perspective. And then okay. I want to get, then I want to naturally get in some of the local politics too. Okay. okay? Go on. We're from a uh, national perspective. We're, we're kind of, we're, we're pleased with where things are right now. Uh, the hur hurricane uh, did a little, uh, uh, kind of stopped the momentum uh, for a while there, and uh, the president had to go back to do his presidential duties, uh, and make sure that the people in this country was uh, was faring as well as possible, uh, you know. But we all understand that uh, in a time of a catastrophe, uh, the one thing that happens is that we all want it now. And in New York, there are certain things that are, that are stopping certain things from happening. And I'm happy to say that uh, all around the country, though, people are coming together and going to New York to help try and uh, relieve some of that uh, pressure on them. Uh, as far as the campaign go, um, both candidates went back out on the campaign trail. And some people, some pundits from the other side are uh, questioning whether the president should have went back out there con uh, pertain uh, simply because of this, the, what has gone on back east and down south. Um, you know, but he's doing what he can do and we are in a, we're in a, a situation and a time, I should say, where he can be in the air and can run the country. You know, that's how good the communications is and everything else is around this country. Uh, as far as uh, other, uh, you know, we were happy to see that uh, General Powell uh, came out for the president, even though uh, was uh, Sununu uh, decided that uh, he only did it because they are both black. You know, and that, here we go, we want to bring race into it, which says that if you're black and I'm black, uh, I shouldn't support you publicly. I can do it inside, but not publicly, because all of a sudden, it's simply because you're black. And that's something that we would like to see go away. You know, as far as uh, working with, uh, with Congress, we hope that over the next four years, Congress will say, let's work to do better for the country, rather than we will not work with you. Our goal is to get you, is to make sure that you are not elected. Uh, so the best way to do that is to make the people suffer. You know, and the people are the ones that really carry the vote. It didn't uh, a lot of Democrats didn't didn't agree with or 
like the outcome of uh, the Supreme Court decision that companies are people, you know, because uh, right there it says that all of a sudden your boss can now tell you how you should vote. Mm -hmm. And those things are, you know, that's not, that's not a good thing for the country. Bob, what, what about the, your sense in regards to the fact that it's still being said now to date that uh, if the Republican wins the presidency aspect of it, there's still going to be a divide. And if the Democrats, it's still going to be a divide. It's still going to be basically the same four years that we've gone through. The well, it'll be two years if the people are smart. Because what, what you need to do is realize that law, uh, there's three branches of government. And we've talked about this many times on this show. There's a legislative branch, there's a judicial branch, and there's an executive branch. And the legislative branch is, a, is in charge of making laws. And when they don't, when they don't do their job, that's the Congress. That's and Congress, the Senate, right? and that's the representatives in the Senate. Right. And when they don't do their job, there are ways to get around them to get things done for the citizens i.e. Uh, the president had to go around them because they would not work with him. You know, he brought them in and tried to talk to them and say, let's all try and get this together. He brought Republicans into his cabinet. He put Republicans in, in positions of power and in order to try and make sure that this country ran well. And they still said no. They got upset with the chief justice of the Supreme Court. You know, because how dare you vote with the other side? In well, regards should, to what? In regards to health care. Uh, how, you know, how in the world can you, can you say there's a side when we're all Americans? You know, that's the thing that we need to get, re get, uh, get away from. It's something like, uh, you know, when I was in South Africa and uh, Nelson Mandela made a statement at a stadium that I, we were all at, and he's looked out to the people and it was, hundreds of thousands of people in this stadium, and he says, there is something that you should never forget. Regardless of the color of your skin, we're all South Africans. Mm. And we in America need to take that to stride today and stop playing this race war. Hmm. You know, I mean, uh, the reason, you know, so now, uh, you know, I was talking to one of my Democratic uh, friends, and they were telling me one of the things that, the reason that you don't see a lot of Obama signs out is because some, they're stealing them. And I said, well, maybe they think they're going to be worth something later local, after the local, election, local. locally and across, across <laughs> the line. You know, and uh, I said, maybe they're going to be collector's items. You know, so well, what's your definition of race war? What do you think? Uh, that's when uh, two people that have a different color of their skin begin to uh, have, have a fight. Uh, and when I say two people with a different color, we have race wars, as far as I'm concerned, in the black community, the dark skin versus the light skin, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, a the Asian versus uh, uh, the black or the, uh, the Jew. My, my grandson was playing football la uh, yesterday out at, um, out at, Rose uh, at Roosevelt. Uh, they were playing at Roosevelt. And here are these 10-year-old kids playing football. And there's a war going on with the parents over, over not playing my child long enough or not uh, the bad call. And all of a sudden you have Latinos, blacks, and whites arguing, fussing, fighting with each other. Isn't that Americana? Over. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, hey, this I, is ridiculous. We got you, to do better. Can you see a father, you, a father, and a mother sitting up in the stand and your, father, and your kids out there got the gear and, and not being played by the coach? You wouldn't say nothing? Hey, my son played basketball. No, would you say anything? I, uh, I did not say anything to the coach. What about the, what I about said the, something to my son. What about your mother? What my mother said? My mother told me I, she played basketball back in her day. What did she and say? you know what she said to me? She says, if you want to play, you better get good at what you do. And I got better at what I did, and I got a scholarship, that's not and the, I paid. That's me. not the majority of mothers. That's right. <laughs> that's because yeah, I know. We, because we have become a tabloid society that wants to bl it wants to make it sensationalize everything and blame somebody else. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Let's you get know. to local race. Talk, okay. Let's comment a little bit about the local race. What do you think? What do you see? You walking around? You yeah. See, you had Loretta on the other day, and. We had Loretta here, Commissioner. Right. Well, uh, when I, I was talking to, uh, I, I, I was on, uh, texting with the uh, chair, and she said all the races look real good. 
we know we're not going to win them all, but we like which one? We, uh, she didn't tell me which ones. Uh, Jeff she didn't think, <laughs> but she said the secretary the secretary of state race looks real good. Doesn't look good. It does. It does. Look it good. does. Okay. And uh, all of the all of the ways they have tried to paint uh, the candidate uh, with uh, say, uh, you know. They have been we've uh, they have been counterpunching in a sense, i.e. Uh, audits. Uh, go back and you check the records, and she's done over a, over a hundred audits on different on different in different areas. But the Republican or whomever it is that's putting out nowadays, you don't know who put, who's putting out the message. You know, uh, saying that she did, she doesn't audit anyone. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we do in America in politics is we look at it and then we assess a cost to it. And when you have to build, have to print this pamphlet twice a year or three times a year when you can do it all one time and put everybody in it, it saves money. And we're, and unfortunately or unfortunately, we're Americans and in America it's not a social society, it's a capitalist society. Really. <laughs> and that's what, <laughs> you know, and, and, and everybody want to call it socialist and, and, and want to act social uh, like it's, it's, it's about people. But really and truly, take the money out the factory and you'll find out where it's really at. That's after the campaign. That's after the campaign. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's talk about Nolan and, and, and uh, Amanda Fritz. Uh, that's that's going to be quite a race here for that's, city council. Yes. Uh, where, where, where do you stand on that piece? Well, I... Uh, Really and truly, I think Amanda Fritz has done a done a, uh, a uh, as good a job as as can be done. Uh, one of the things that someone said was well, she don't look the part, and I'm like, my goodness, you better you better check the content of the heart and not and not the uh, and not the the cover of this book. You know, she she cares about the people. She cares about uh, about the city, and she cares about making sure that the job that she's doing fits within the realm of what the well, you know, One of the concerns that, that's come out quite a bit, mm -hmm. as you know, she spent that four four year term, that first term, in, right? But she really didn't get the responsibility. I mean, she wasn't assigned too many bureaus. One, that, right. was, that was a complaint about that peace aspect of it, and she wasn't as aggressive enough fighting for for her particular issues. You know, it's just a. He's just sitting like on the fringe, if you will, and that's that's one of the major concerns. She, she didn't get all the endorsements of all the papers. I mean, I think she got the Oregonian, right. but she didn't get the Willamette Week. She didn't get the Tribune, right, or something like that. Uh, it was two of them. It yeah, was two or three. Two, 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 or three, two major deal. That was a ma That's one of the major concerns that she didn't get enough co committees and actually did the work for that. You know? Right. Well, she did. She did do some things within the community. You know, and like. uh, uh, she worked with. As a matter of fact, she worked with Loretta on a, on a couple of uh, uh, county county commission on a couple of issues. Anything, any uh, ladies thing? issues. Yeah, uh, you know, and your first term in office is is a learning. There's a learning curve, and some of us don't learn as as, as quickly as others. Mm -hmm. But man, when you get your feet, when you begin to feel confident in what you're doing, you know, you watch them go, mm -hmm. and I can name some 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 uh, commissioners uh, that have been uh, that have been out there that, you know, they were quiet as church mice uh, until there's something that happened over here that was uh, they could get their name on, but it wasn't anything really major. But it got your name out there, and bingo, you know, that's how you, that's how you move up. You stay away from the freckles, but you uh, get publicity. Wherever you can on the issues that are not. Really I guess another concern really about about that particular situation was, as you know, she was the she's the only sitting commissioner that was able that was financed through the public financing, right? Putting money aspect of it, and uh, you know, you think that uh, she would have gotten that monetary support, but she wasn't able to raise any money. She had to personally put some what hundred two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Yes. I mean, I mean, the same people who gave her five dollars a piece. I think it was a thousand of what was it, a thousand people or whatever. And she was having problems raising she didn't, up her well, money. What's the deal? It, it looked like she doesn't know how uh, to go out and ask for money. Like Loretta, like Loretta said, one of the hardest things in the world to do when you're in political office is to go out and and raise the money, you know. And that's one of the things that we as the people need to change, you know, because 
if someone gives her a uh, hundred thousand dollars does that mean that they bought her vote you know i'd rather see the people in uh, the people around the state put in uh, put money aside and say here's here everybody puts in two dollars mm -hmm. and this is what and it's divided equally and this is what you run off of and you can and you can add your money but you can't go out and get any other money and that'll i guarantee you that'll change the the, the whole playing field as far as uh politics well, you know, is you make a point there because in all due respect um, when you start thinking about that the, they had set their system up if you will to mm -hmm. provide monies from the public right and but the whole idea was they were supposed to go out and shake hands with the individual and get the five dollars mm -hmm. and that's why i'm a, i was opposed to it that that was not the that was not the policy the bottom line, they could have hired a consultant or this, that, and the other, and it really didn't work. Right. As you know, I, I was right in the middle of that deal. <laughs> I remember. And I was right in the middle of that deal, <laughs> and that's why I oppose it, as far as I'm concerned. If it did the job, in, in all due respect, uh, you know, uh, in fact, the sitting commissioner actually sent mailers out, uh, and that was Commissioner Stent, remember right. that? And he basically took some of the monies, if you will, for his last campaign. Right. That's right. And then left right in the middle of it. <laughs> Of the, the deal, see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so anyway, but the bottom line is that uh, we want to get more people involved in the process aspect of it. But the fact is, I would suggest that yeah, we do need to have a discussion. But, but anyway, but Amanda, uh, again, like I said, there was some, those are some of the concerns that I'm bringing mm -hmm. up with that particular office. So I think well, it's going to be a tight race. That's not a democratic uh, race. That's a it's a nonpartisan. Yeah, nonpartisan yeah. and. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a tight race. Yeah, uh, Northern has some pretty good experience. Yeah. You know, from the standpoint of she was she was at city, she was transportation chief or something there. Yeah, he had a so, so anyway, but the bottom line that's it. Now let's talk about the the mayor's race there for a minute. I mean, you you know both of those guys, don't you? I know both of them, and I am, you know, I can tell you that I was surprised. Uh, I went to a black veterans uh, uh, function uh, Friday night. And I was surprised just talking. Everybody know that I, I like politics. I, I talk about it. And I was amazed at how many people said, I'm voting for Jefferson Smith. Hmm. You know, and I was like, you are? I, mean, I don't have a vote in this race. But I was really, and they said, yeah, he has the best ideas for Portland, even though his past is kind of shady. Why? Why are we? At and that I'm point like, now that we, why is it? Why are we? At the, what, what do you think? Why are we having this place at the point now where we tend to discount? We may go back in time, mm -hmm. but there are some there were some social issues there. I mean, why, why are we just kind of like say forgetting it and just going on? What do you think? Well, um, what do you think? Why is that? My attitude about 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 change is people change. The older they get, the more they begin to change, and. I think Jefferson is beginning to reach that maturity, that that age where he's beginning to mature some. And he's very concerned about Portland. I know that. I've worked with him in the past. You know, he's very concerned about Portland. He's he has some very, some good ideas, but his ideas are a little different than those people of the past. Uh those people that want to be stay stuck in the past. And so those people that are making money off those ideas of the past are a little afraid of him. Mm -hmm. You know, you're afraid of the things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. But then, but then remember now, that's, remember one of the shows we talked about, remember? Mm -hmm. Here in the, in the uh, Portland metropolitan area, yeah. there are three areas that you just don't mess with. Yeah. <laughs> the woman. Yeah. The bicyclist. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the animal. <laughs> Right? Yeah, you can go to jail. You can, a long time messing with those. On all three, three of those three, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and he was a legislature at one point in time, mm -hmm. a state representative, right? Right. But the issue didn't come up at that point in time, and but he does. He's from Southeast Portland, and right in front. There's definitely a need to represent those folks in that area. Right. But you know, you think that that clean slate on both sides. I think I think Charlie was in the same boat, if you will, like living in another state and and this that and the both sides of that aspect of it. Why didn't the media? They had. The, I think they had that information. Why didn't they come up with that information right off the bat? Because in all due respect, there was a woman running for office mm -hmm. at the time. There was a woman running for office, right. a businesswoman, okay? Very well qualified. Now, if that had been known, she'd probably been the only one on the slate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? Well, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? The politics is strange, bread fella. Somebody That's all I can say. <laughs> you know, 
And what about media? You think media should have been responsible for that? Well, I don't think the media. The media is supposed to do what the media is is, is supposed to do, and that is broadcast the news, not make the news. Yeah, but that was already and there. They're, they're if, the one that broadcast news that was there that, twenty years ago. Uh, that's true. I mean, I uh, you know, I'm I, I'm not a Republican, but I have voted for a Republican. Pack well, you're nonpartisan now. Uh, you're, you're, okay. You're not, <laughs> <laughs> I voted for Pack I mean, because he was good for Oregon. About. No, we're you talking know. about a nonpartisan yeah. race now. Okay. The mayor's race now. Okay. So. And and what but, about but Eileen? I'm, you think Eileen Brady should have been? She, really I, don't, should. She, I don't think she had enough experience. What? I do not think she had enough experience running a company. It's not like running a city. But she wasn't living out of the state. And well, the but that's, 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 and she didn't I hit run, a woman. She didn't hit a I woman. I want somebody that knows something about what they're doing. But she's a businesswoman. I mean, you know. running the state, the city is not like running a company. I'm telling you. Uh, well, what about on-the-job training? We talked about that for a minute. You're talking about giving Everybody a, gets on the that's the bad part about it all. Everybody gets it? Everybody is going so to get Eileen on the Brady then should she's, have been elected. Well, I ain't saying she should. She should She should have done what she did, which was had a chance, and the people said no. Yeah, but that's not a fair now chance. The not a fair chance, though. Well, I think it was a fair chance. I mean, uh, why don't we have another election? Why don't we just say set the mayor deal out there and then have another deal and people can go in and... So you're just trying to be funny. No, I'm not. <laughs> Let's have another election. Yeah. Why don't we ask you? You run. Huh? You run. I sure will. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't hit anybody. I mean, that's nobody's dog. I, I'm afraid I, to run because I don't. I can't even remember what I did yesterday. Oh, I can't. So I don't know what somebody's yeah. going to say I did we two years you, ago. We're trying to get you to run in Clackamas anyway because you, you, you know the politics of Portland. But I, I know the politics of Clackamas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you don't even and run. You need to run. Clackamas bro. County, uh, you know, we just had our first uh, major uh, catastrophe during the election out there. A uh, lady was caught changing changing votes, changing votes at the at the uh, at elections office. She's counting votes, and when she sees when when no one voted for someone, she voted someone. She, she marked the ballot. Uh, since I'm a Democrat, I ain't gonna tell you what what party she was well, with. But that's fair in politics. Remember, you're gonna go to jail for doing that kind of stuff. Well, was she supposed to? Huh? She's supposed to. I mean, I think there's there's something uh, called fraud. Uh, voter, it's got to be a law out there that says that if you tamper with a ballot, something happens. And they don't even know how many she did. And, and you know, so I guess in order for the other party, I ain't gonna tell you what party she's with, but in order for the other party to win, she felt she had to. Uh, well, she's nonpartisan, probably. Uh, she, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had an R by her name. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know gonna... But anyway, um, so, we, so we've gone through the mayoral piece, right? Yeah. So we got that piece out the way aspect of it. Anything else that, that's, that stands out? Uh, the, the casino thing is not going to be there anymore. Now, what, well, what, it okay. do, uh, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be there. It's on the ballot. It's on the ballot, right. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, voting, you know, it's, uh, you, you're voting, you're going to have an opportunity to uh, Okay. We look like we're at the end here, buddy. Well, in fact, we still not. I still have my ballot, folks. I, I'll probably just keep this until I think some other things are going to happen again. Can I tell? Yeah. Can yeah. I tell them how the? No, nope, we're done. We're done. Yep, look like we're at the end of the day here, oh, right? Oh man, Bob, sorry about that. That's okay. Again, Call you, folks. Go online and go get out Democrat. and vote and vote and vote. You got the voters pamphlet. Get out there, pull out that ballot if you haven't done it yet. Okay. Have a good one, folks. We'll see you next time around. We'll be talking about recap. Yeah. In fact, we might get Jeff and the folks around just kind of talk about, hey, what's yeah, going on? Clear. Okay? Uh, take care. We ran that one.